consciousness then there is only one thing that is not doing and that is awareness watchfulness the only thing that is not the part of the world of action is pure awareness no shadow is created by pure awareness actions create a shadow awareness does not create shadows it is so pure that light can pass through it it is transparent and no shadow is created out of that consciousness without thinking when thoughts are not floating as frequently as before then it becomes awareness being alert and with no thought leads you to a state of benediction try it whenever you see thinking gathering in you disperse it immediately and be mindful of it thoughts capture you only in a moment of unconsciousness the moment you become aware of it the thoughts begin to disappear pull yourself out of that state am i to do here thinking no look at the trees listen to the chirping of the birds you are moving away from the thoughts look at the trees look at the chirping of the birds listen to the chirping of the birds but the chirping of the birds feel it inside look at the sun rising and feel that rising of the sun within you just as sun has risen the light has come the glow is there on the sky same way inner sun is rising now there is light within you also a sun of consciousness is rising in you but do not think about it or assert or state or say simply be the rising of the sun is standing by the side of the tree be like feel like a tree and by and by you will start feeling the glimpses of awareness as if a fresh breeze has entered into your room which was getting a still and dead as if a ray of light has entered into the dark night of the soul or as if suddenly life has called you back into its fold <coughs> excuse me and you will enter into a totally different way of life deeper your watchfulness becomes in the same proportion your awareness deepens and the gaps and intervals begin to rise what are you seeing here hey, what do you see hey, hey, hey. Hey, the five fingers with the ring on it five fingers with the ring on it and nothing else you can see your hand you are hands. seeing the hand with the five fingers but between this finger and this finger there is this space that is a gap between this gap what is important is the finger important to you to me gap is important when between the two thoughts there is a gap thought is not a continuous process if your gestalt changes and you start focusing on the gap between the two thoughts you are moving in the meditation direction of meditation but if your focus is on the thoughts flowing no thought is not important to me 
the gap that two thoughts create. A car passes whistling on the road, but the next car does not come attached to it. After a few seconds, a next car passes, but between the two cars there is no noise on the street, no car is passing. Our consciousness is in those gaps. The music is silence, but how can music be silence? Music, musician creates a note and leaves the gap in between. He wants you to connect to the, those gaps. The moment you start falling into those gaps that he creates between the two notes, that is the purpose of his note and that is what gives you a fulfillment. Am I right? The music, the real music exists between the <coughs> gaps of the two notes. And between the two notes is the silence. Two thoughts is the silence. Silence, the peak and valley stay together. But we, are, we can see only the peaks, not the valleys. We can see only thoughts, not the gaps. The moment we start moving from thoughts to gaps, something is begins to arise into you. One thought comes and then has disappeared, but the next thought has not come in. You watch the social media, Facebook, no post remains on the screen if your timeline is very active. It does not stay more than 10 to 15 seconds on the timeline. The next post comes in. When you watch the television screen, the scenes do not stay for too long. It keeps on moving like this is how the life is. One thought comes and then has disappeared, but the next thought has not come yet. There is a gap. One cloud has passed and before another comes there is a gap. In those gaps for the first time you get the glimpse of no mind. You taste a state beyond the mind. You can call it taste of Zen. You can call it taste of Tao. You can call it taste of Yoga. Names do not matter. In those small intervals, suddenly the sky is clear. The sun is shining. Suddenly world is full of mysteries for you now because all barriers are dropped. The screen in front of your eyes is no more. You see clearly and penetratingly then whole existence becomes transparent for you. Remember the innermost core or innerness or flowering of being is witnessing, awareness, watchfulness. You can call it by any name, but that will be another meaning of witnessing. Truth alone is pure awareness and when truth begins to blossom through you, you know it as the flowering of consciousness. As consciousness flowers, you become more and more aware, just being aware, the thoughts starts disappearing. There is no need to fight with the thoughts, just bringing the light into it. And awareness is the light. The moment the light comes in, that is more than enough to take care of the thoughts. Awareness is enough to destroy any kind of disturbance that is there. And when mind is empty, the temple is ready. And inside the temple, the only God worth placing is silence. Silence is the only God 
that I can worship. The serenity and that alone is bliss. So those three words you have to remember, relaxation, thoughtlessness and silence. And these three words are no more words to you, instead they have become your experience. I am not talking about those scriptural injunctions, truth, this and that, relaxation you all know. A state of thoughtlessness you all know. Silence that descends you all know. These are your experiences. And when you have experienced this, your life will be transformed. How to relax? You cannot relax because of ego. And that's where I had spoken yesterday one of the composition of the poets. That is a Pakistani composer. Khudi hai ek fasana. Khudi means ego. It does not exist. It is not a reality, but it appears to have existed. It's a fa false entity. That is why it is a phenomenon. Khudi hai ek fasana, la ilaha illallah. Remembrance of the God is the way to, uh, to negate that. But how can you uh, remember that? You can keep on remembering this. This is the ultimate flowering. Remembrance the estate. But what is the methodology to do that? The methodology to attain to that is a technique that we have to follow. And Sufis use the technique used Allahu. Allahu. But I removed Allahu even that. So it has nothing to do with religion. You are aware of your solar plexus. Through the solar plexus, through umbilical cord, you were connected once to your mother's womb and you draw your nourishment from that. If umbilical cord did not exist, the nourishment will not come to you. During mother's womb, you got your nourishment through the umbilical cord connected to the mother's womb. Now you have to establish that connection once again to the cosmic source so that you start getting your nourishment from the cosmic womb. And our solar plexus is always tense. In order to relax this, and why it happens, the breathing in is a natural process. We breathe in naturally, but all that air that is brought into and it converts into carbon dioxide, but all that is carbon dioxide is produced is not exhaled completely. A part of that retains in us, <coughs> that creates the tension. And you can call it in scientific language, it is carbon dioxide, but it is the residual of thoughts, residual of those actions which have not been lived with awareness. And those remain as toxins in our body. Medical science, the pharmacist will sell you his talk, the formula to release the toxins and it has become a great business 
in the Western world to release the toxins. He may give you a program for hundred dollars to release the toxins. But unless you are aware, toxins will not be removed from the body. So one of the most important technique is you sit down with your back straight either on the chair or on the floor, whichever way is comfortable to you. And you are only exhaling and exhaling with a force. So with that, your solar plexus will have a vigorous contraction and expansion. It will move like a bellow, which is the important musical instrument, a bellow instrument called in field of music as harmonium. A lead singer uses the harmonium to tune in all other instruments with that. Every single instrument has to be tuned into that. All the various organs which act as musical instruments in human body, the earth center, the water center, these are lower than the solar plexus. These are the replica of percussion instruments. In percussion instrument, the Indian instruments, that is, the use the tabla or the drum instrument, they are used in pairs. So these earth center and the water center act as percussion instrument, but these two has to be tuned in with the solar plexus. So when you are sitting down and you are exhaling, If you can do this for three weeks time, a lot of things will release. Now I do it. I don't need to do, but I still do it. 432 times. Now how I do it? We have been taught when we use rosary, we use right hand. Why we can't use the left hand? And when we use the right hand, right hand activates the left side of the brain. It is a reversible process. The human brain is divided into two hemispheres, the right and the left side. Right side of the brain connects to the left side of the body and vice versa. So through the brain, Activating the right side of the body is difficult, but using the body as an instrument, you can use the left side, left hand to activate the right side of the brain and the right hand to activate the left side of the brain and create the balance between the two hemispheres of the brain. So when I start doing, I will use this left hand because left hand is least active hand and because it is least active so the right side of the brain remains dormant does not exist and what does right side means the positive emotions the love the understanding how many people how many of us have love flowing how many of us have understanding how many we have a, a good Samaritan approach. So for that I need to activate, use my left hand and from the very beginning I was told don't use the left hand. It is the devil's hand. And in India, the when the toilet papers were not available, the other facilities were not available. So left hand was used for bowel cleaning. So it is said this is dirty hand. 
He said, how can that be dirty hand? He said, you argue too much. I said, you tell me what is their dirty hand? And there is nothing more dirty than the mouth. So I will use this hand. This have the number up to 12, I'll count. Watch the movement. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So twelve I completed. This is active. I want this hand to be more active. I will put one mark here that I have completed a cycle of twelve. Then I will do again start up one here. Then next twelve. So when this cycle of 12 completes, means 12 multiplied by 1244, I have completed. And I'll complete three times 144 makes 432. It takes six minutes, five to six minutes. If we cannot spend five or six minutes for us, for ourselves, you are not spending for me, for you, then there is no right for you to be, then you can complain. But there is a simple methodology. I remove the, the religious aspects from this. The most important thing is this solar plexus should be contracting and expanding in a vigorous, fast movement. And also, if you are feeling tired, you want to get relaxed, you don't need to do anything else. Just Sit down or lie down, keep your mouth slightly open. Just sit down in a comfortable position and keep your mouth slightly open and tell me what happens. <coughs> Just in any position, doesn't need to be a yoga position or any position, any position that makes you comfortable slightly open. Anyone can point out what happened? Did you feel tense or relaxed? Yes. But why did you feel relaxed? Because in that state, your breathing went deeper into you. It reaches to the solar plexus. Normally, when you are tense, you don't breathe, you breathe shallow. Breathing is not deep. And unless your breathing reaches the solar plexus, it cannot relax you. So the moment you do this, you will find that your breathing reaching, breath reaching to the solar plexus and it gives you relaxation. So I want it to be more and more relaxed so that's why this particular exercise, this particular meditation, you are hammering the solar plexus five minutes. If you can do morning, evening, in the beginning, double dose, it will help you the most. And it will connect, it will tune in to your lower musical instruments the earth center and the water center. Then each vein into you is a string, a stringed instrument, strings. Then 
the throat center is from here the wind instruments are played it connects the throat center and the heart center the heart center is in the chest area it needs to restore enough air and release it through the throat center into the wind instrument to create the music my right so it connects it tunes in the two parts of the body the heart and the throat center throat center is the center of expression so these are the two musical instruments two instruments the wind instruments and jalaluddin rumi used tremendously the example of reed the flute the moment you become empty the flute has this quality it does not have any energy of its own it is empty within and then when the air is blown into it it creates the melodious music then there are the string instrument every vein into your body represents the veins represents the strings a stringed instrument in the musical repertoire are considered to be the highest the wind instrument the bellow instrument the bellow instrument is the lowest wind instrument is in the middle and the stringed instrument is the most precious one and when you are using the stringed instrument specifically sitar just where the person keeps it over hand there are seven very small strings so from time to time the musician vibrates those strings and if you are a tuned instrument the moment a master musician begins to play his instrument the other instrument which is existing in the vicinity it is tuned it begins to resonate the same music so a disciple is that another example of the disciple and the master relationship is disciple is like a sunflower and the sun is the master as the sun moves the sunflower changes its direction this is the subtle relationship nobody tells the sunflower that sun is not any more in the easternly direction in the morning the sunflower faces the east by the time evening comes in it is facing west because sun has changed its direction through the practice of mindfulness one can attain to awareness and this exercise that i have pointed out to you it will relax your solar plexus establish a rhythm into your various parts of your body various psycho centers and make you more and more relax however only very few people are born with awareness those are the people who die full of awareness so next life they are born with total awareness if death was conscious then birth will be conscious as well if you sleep with total consciousness in the morning when you wake up you are conscious death the sleep is one side when you are aware through life's roads then you will be aware in the final moments of death as well 
a conscious death brings conscious birth as well indeed it is benediction to be born aware born conscious and die as well awareness is the greatest alchemy possible just go on becoming more and more aware and you will find life it starts changing for better in every possible dimension even the physical life becomes begins to change and you will feel as if you are not doing anything but somebody else is doing your work like angels are doing your work and you are sitting down nothing else the everything becomes so smooth that there is no problem whatsoever it will bring great fulfillment into you and it is said you cannot remain aware for more than 48 minutes continuously and that alone is enough that alone is enough for awareness you need not renounce the world go to the mountains or monasteries or anywhere else your life gives you enough opportunities to be aware each moment each circumstance each situation that comes you can be either aware or unaware somebody insults you you listen to it with full of awareness you will be surprised that insult has not remained insult anymore what had happened to me in that situation the person is spoke in a loud voice if it was anybody else what you would do is the way that you deal to speak to a customer i will go and report it to the manager <coughs> i ask you will immediately go to the manager and ask yes i can complain to the manager but what the, the why should i complain about that person the maybe she may lose her job but that will not please me if a opportunity comes 